All right, well, welcome back. So this is our second video for the semester, Chemistry 125. And uh, the point of the second lab is to calculate or determine the empirical formula of magnesium oxide. So the empirical formula represents the simplest whole number ratio between atoms in a molecule. It's a pretty straightforward lab. Most, time, most times I've seen students do it, it's not a problem. And if you think about it, and I'll show you here in a second, you already know the empirical formula of magnesium oxide from the nomenclature. So magnesium oxide, you can figure out the formula. And if it's not the empirical formula, then you can reduce it down to the empirical formula. But if you think about it, it's actually pretty easy. And then you're going to see how your data compare. So I think I'll actually just start there. So with the, with the lab, the whole point is focusing on empirical formula. I'd like to take the opportunity in this video to introduce two other things that are not specifically in this lab, but it makes sense to introduce them. Okay. So for the lab itself, and I'm, I'm not going to go through this in any detail, because it's really more on you to get this one uh, done properly, and I think it'll make complete sense. It's pretty straightforward. So you're going to go to the lab, and we'll give you a piece of magnesium, and you'll, you'll record the mass of the magnesium. Actually, the first thing you're going to do is record the mass of an empty crucible, which is the ceramic container that can withstand high temperatures, and then subtract that mass off of the container plus the magnesium, but that's, that's a detail you work out. So you'll do the chemical reaction, you'll add the water, you'll form the ammonia to make more magnesium oxide. We went through all that last time, so equations one, two, and three. And then you'll go back to the balance room and you'll do some calculations. And I'm going to put that in quotes because you're not supposed to know that that's the answer. Okay. So you go back and you'll you'll determine the number of grams of magnesium oxide. Okay, that's fine. So the mass of the one of the reactants, the mass of the product, and from that information you can deduce how much oxygen was actually pulled out of the air. Now we didn't add the oxygen directly; it's just present, and as much oxygen as necessary will be pulled out of the air uh, to do the reaction. Well, that's fine. Now you're, now you're kind of home free, because the whole point is to figure out what is the empirical formula of magnesium oxide. To do that, you'll need to calculate the moles of magnesium. To go from grams to moles should be pretty straightforward by now. Use your conversion factor, your atomic mass, molar mass of an atom. Okay. Uh, you'll get your moles of O2, and then you'll use the mole information to determine the simplest whole number mole ratio that makes up magnesium oxide, and that's the empirical formula. So it's a pretty straightforward lab. I don't think you'll have any trouble. What I'd like to do today, actually, is to take this reaction or this idea one step further, kind of look at a story problem. I really don't remember how much magnesium we're going to give you. I'm pretty sure it's not. Uh, six tenths of a gram. That would be a big piece of magnesium. So it's much, much smaller than that. But I'll still carry four significant figures because that's what our electronic balances can do. So let's say you take a, a 0.6001 gram piece of magnesium. You go through all the steps, equations one, two, and three, and you form magnesium oxide. What would be the theoretical yield of magnesium oxide? Now, what does that mean? Theoretical yield is, well, in theory, using chemistry, using theories that we assume to be true, how much magnesium oxide should form. It shouldn't be random. We should be able to figure this out. And you remember this from last time. It's two magnesium atoms or two moles of magnesium react with one mole of oxygen. Uh, usually if the coefficient is one, we don't bother to write it. Sometimes it's confusing to yield, thus theoretical yield, two moles of magnesium oxide. Now remember, the, the coefficients are mole ratios, so maybe I should put it there for now. Two moles of magnesium only requires one mole of oxygen. Two moles of magnesium, if it reacts completely, will produce two moles of magnesium oxide. If you wish to produce two moles of magnesium oxide, you will need a mole of oxygen and two moles of magnesium. So you read them either way, but the bottom line is they are conversion factors. Mole bridges, some people call them, uh, however you want to call them. Okay, so 
you'll have your own style for doing these problems. I'm just going to give you a suggestion. What I like to do when I do these problems is I just do bookkeeping because I think it's faster. Is I know I'm starting out with 0 0.6001 grams of magnesium. And I know I'm going to need some information about magnesium. I know I'm going to have to do something with moles because that's what we do in chemistry. When you don't know what to do, take what you're given. In this case, you're given grams and convert it into moles somehow. In this case, my periodic table is 24.301 grams of magnesium per mole, just so I have it there. Probably not necessary to do this for this simple problem. We get into more complicated problems. This is a good bookkeeping procedure. I've got my mass and my molar mass right there. The question asks nothing about oxygen. It doesn't ask how much oxygen is required. It doesn't ask how much oxygen is left over. It doesn't ask anything. Well, why? Because we have excess oxygen. There's more oxygen than we need. And oftentimes, when we do a chemical reaction, we'll put one chemical in and then add a significant more amount than the other one that we need. This is getting ahead of ourselves. Magnesium is called the limiting reactant. Oxygen is the excess reactant. We didn't measure it. It's just excess by nature because it's in air. So. If you want to label this, this is the limiting reactant, this is the excess reactant, and our goal here is to figure out how many grams, that's the theoretical yield by the way, how much mass, so what are the units on theoretical yield? 99 times out of 100 it's grams, okay, and I'm probably going to need the molar mass of magnesium, let's see, so that's uh, 24.305 plus, well, okay. I don't know why I put 301. Not that it matters for sig figs, but plus uh, 15.999 for oxygen. Fine. Now, if you get a slightly different number, it doesn't really matter. And the molar mass over here is 40.304 grams of magnesium oxide for every mole of magnesium oxide. So we've got everything we need. Now, if you've done these before, you know how to do it. Here are the basic steps. I'm going to write it out in one big thing, uh, and then you can see it. Well, maybe I'll just write it out in steps. So first step. Get your moles of magnesium. Second step, get your moles of magnesium oxide. Last step, mass of magnesium oxide. Everybody has a different way of teaching this. I'm just going to show it to you all in one series of steps, and uh, then we'll just kind of stop there for the day. And I'm, well, actually, I might go back and show you percent yield too. Okay, so let's just set it up. 0.6001 grams of magnesium. By now you should probably be able to, if I just said convert it to moles and stop, this is probably what you would do. You take the molar mass and put it in the denominator. Numerator, denominator, the units cancel. I'm just going to leave that there for now. Once you have moles, then you backtrack to the chemical equation that's balanced. Use your mole bridge to go from one chemical to another. Doesn't matter if it's left to right, right to left, or on the same side. It doesn't matter. Just in between any two chemicals. So we want to get rid of moles of magnesium. So two moles of magnesium correspond, well, that's easy, to two moles of MgO, if you're, if you're slick, you'll ignore that when you put it into your calculator because it's 1 over 1. Okay. Uh, okay, and then, whoa, almost slipped. And then you want to go to mass of magnesium oxide. So we know that a mole of magnesium oxide is 40.304 grams. And I'll put grams of MgO. Sorry, kind of small there. 
All right, when you, start, when you start to do quizzes and tests, you want to be efficient. So if there's steps you can ignore, ignore them, okay? So the math is going to be 0 0.6001 times 1, well, ignore that because it's 2 over 2, times 40.304 divided by 24.305. That's just putting it in your calculator. That's not showing that you understand what's going on. That's just getting it properly in there. So what I got, and oh, sig figs, these are all exact numbers. We don't have those affect the sig figs, so we want 4 in our answer. So I'm going to get times... 0.6001 equals this divided by 24.305 and rounding it 0 0.9951. Nine nine five one what? Well, grams of magnesium cancel, moles of magnesium cancel, moles MgO. These are the units. Grams of MgO. So that's our theoretical yield. Now it's also good sometimes to look and say, does that answer make sense? Because some students, I think, are some if they think about it, are a little thrown. I started off with 0.6 grams. I ended up with almost a full gram. How does that work? Oftentimes, like a chemical reaction, I'm burning something. It should get smaller. Well, in this case, it's not getting smaller. In this case, it's getting bigger. You're taking an atom of oxygen, combining it with magnesium. So the molecule is getting bigger. So it makes sense that the mass is bigger. Okay, so that's the theoretical yield, 0 0.9951 grams. The last thing I want to show you is pretty easy. Is Well, let's say you go to the lab. Uh, yeah, I really should have labeled this. So we'll call that... Um, Part A. That was part A. So part B assume zero point uh, I'll just make up a number. Eight two six one grams MGO are actually collected in your lab. Okay, so you didn't do the reaction perfect. Some of some of the MGO escape because it's very fine particulate matter. It looks like smoke because I guess technically it is a type of smoke. So you lost some of it. Maybe you spilled some of it. Maybe your crucible cracked and you, you spilled some of it. So there's some error there that you want to address in your lab report. So you're not going to get 100% theoretical yield. If you did, if you got 100% yield, then this number would be 0 0.9951. That rarely happens that you get 100% yield. So the equation that we use to calculate this is not theoretical yield, but percent yield. And there's different ways of writing this, but it's basically the same thing. It's what you got in the actual experiment divided by your theoretical yield. That times 100. That gives you an idea of how well did you do the reaction, how efficient were you, how good were you. So for this one, oh, the main mistake I see some students make is experimental over theoretical. Sometimes they'll take the mass of what they're given to start with and they'll put that here. That doesn't make any sense. That's the mass of magnesium. If you're doing percent yield, you want to always be thinking about the product, what's yielded, not what's reacted. So 0 0.8261 grams divided by 0 0.9951 grams. I suppose to make that point, it's grams of magnesium oxide over grams of magnesium oxide. Because if you're calculating a percentage, the units have to cancel. Percentages are unitless numbers. One, divided by 0.9951. I'll do the let's say let's go four sig figs, 83.02. So if somebody says, What was your percent yield? How'd you do? Well, I got 83% yield. That's pretty good. 
when you take organic chemistry, if you ever do that, you're going to do this a lot. You'll, you'll do a chemical reaction, you'll calculate a percent yield, and you'll comment on what sources of air did you have in making a slightly more sophisticated molecule, but it's the same basic method. And I think that's it. That should be plenty to get you started with this lab. So I hope that was helpful, and we'll see you in lab.